Amen. Why don't you just open your mouth and leave all your bodies where you are? In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much this morning. We bless your name. All the bodies we have represented here, for every brother and every sister, we leave it here at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that no brother, no sister, no family here will take bodies and problems and mountains and heartaches and sorrow back home in Jesus' name. The laughter we have seen here this morning will continue with your people. The joy we have seen here this morning will continue with your people. Lord, where there is guilt, where there is condemnation, where there is burden, wipe everything away. Where there is sorrow, where there is heartache, wipe everything away. Where there has been an incurable disease, take everything away. Where it looks, where it appears that scientifically some things are impossible. This morning, this week, this whole year, make it possible in the lives of your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, nothing will bend or bow down the head of your people. These people here this day, they will be victorious. They will be more than conquerors. And the joy of the Lord will be with them in the service of the Lord. I pray, Lord, what you have done for others and the great things you are doing for everybody here, everybody will be a partaker. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, God bless you. Please sit down. As I told you, we have two messages combined today. The first message, Christ's sufficiency for every need. Everybody, can you say that? And then the second message, which should have been given tomorrow, which were given today as well, a life of holy triumph. Can we say that? Now, the title you are going to write down, combining them together, Christ's sufficiency and a life of holy triumph. That's the combined topic. Christ's sufficiency and a life of holy triumph. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As you look at this verse, Paul the Apostle by inspiration encouraging you, encouraging me. That whatever situation you find yourself, in any place you find yourself, and whatever need may appear in your life, my dear brother, my dear sister, God is able. God is able. Come on the side of Caleb, God is able. And come on the side of Joshua and shout it out, God is able. As you stand before your Red Sea, remember, God is able. As you stand in River Jordan and you want to pass over, God is able. As you are looking at the walls of Jericho and you want them to come down flat, remember, God is able. As you are confronted with Goliath, remember, God is able. And when you come on and you travel on to Babylon, and you confront Nebuchadnezzar and you are standing in the company of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego you will say God is able. You are moving on to the New Testament and John is now by your side and you are telling them like John, God is able of these tools to raise up children unto Abraham and then you come to the greatest of all the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and there you tell them with God nothing shall be impossible God is able and as you go throughout this year anywhere you are any need that may come in your life while the other people are sorrowful and they're saying what are we going to do we don't know what's going to happen to us you will remember as you are hearing on this day God is able able to make all grace abound toward you the grace to stand and the grace to preach and the grace to pray 
and the grace to endure and the grace to have all your needs supplied and grace for every need remember god is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you always having never lacking always having never lacking always having all sufficiency in all things in the pulpit, all sufficiency in all things. In the time of prayer, all sufficiency in all things. In your family need, all sufficiency in all things. And when you go to the highest mountain, all sufficiency in all things. And when it appears that many people are saying, oh, are we going to do this? You say, you have all sufficiency in all things. May I bound to every good work. You will do good. I said you will do good. There is nothing confronting you that you will not be able to overcome because your God is able. And is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always have in all sufficiency in all things will definitely, assuredly, certainly be able to abound unto every good work. How could we say that with confidence? Because of Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus this year and for the rest of your life. As you hold on to this verse, you will never come to a situation where there is no solution for the problem. You will never come to a situation where the perplexity will so overwhelm you and you will not know the direction to go. You will never have a program that the Lord has directed you to have and the resources to effect that program is not available because my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Third John, I'm reading from verse 2. Third John reading from verse 2 in this epistle short epistle this verse 2 of third john here watch the apostle is telling you and telling me beloved and you are the beloved of the lord i said you are the beloved of the lord don't ever let the devil tell you you are anything lower than the beloved of the lord beloved i wish i pray i desire above all things that thou mayest prosper and you will prosper and be in health, and you will be in health. Even as thy soul prospereth, your soul will prosper in Jesus' name. That's the sufficiency of Christ for you. But you know that we're also talking about the life of triumph. The life of holy triumph. Literally, you are going to become a champion. You are going to become a hero. And the things that happen in your ministry, and the things that happen around you, in your family, in your life, everybody that hears will just say, I wish I were like brother so and so. I wish I were like sister so and so. The people will desire to be like you because power and triumph and victory is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always, everybody say always, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Remember that watch always. Whenever any difficulty comes up in your life, remember always, this one, I am going to triumph. Any challenge comes in your life, this one, I am going to triumph. And your boat is on the stormy sea. And the other people are crying, Master, Master, Lord, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? You know, Christ is here. Christ is with you. And in this case, you are going to triumph. My dear sister over there, the last time you got pregnant and, you know, you were to deliver, it was like between heaven and earth. And then now another pregnancy has come. And this other pregnancy, once in a while, your mind will go back to the experience of the past. And you are saying, how am I going to make it? Because even before the time comes, it's like fear in your heart. It's like within your heart, you are praying, I hope, I hope I will not go with this one. You will not go with this one. We need you here. You are going to stay with us here. And you are going to do well because God always from now on will cause you to triumph in Jesus' name. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57. It says, but thanks be to God which giveth 
he gave, he gives, he will give. Which giveth, he keeps on giving. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, here we are told, Nay, in all these things, we are, tell me out loud, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Does he love you? Do you love him? That's all it takes to be more than a conqueror. There are three points we're going to consider in the message. Number one, the promise of happiness and all things in fullness. The promise of happiness and all things in fullness. Number two, the power of a hopeful, trusting faith. The power of a hopeful, trusting faith. Number three, the praise of heroic, triumphant faith. The praise of heroic, triumphant faith. Let's go to number one. Number one, the promise of happiness and all things in fullness. In Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, I am reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Every time when you wake up and there is a need, there is a program, or there is, you know, something you are thinking about, a challenge in your life, all things shall be added unto me today. Do you need a supporter? Do you need a friend? Do you need somebody to come along and lead the load for you? All things shall be added to me today. Are you looking for finance to be able to carry this project out and that project out? All things shall be added unto me today. Is there, you need an official in that country so that you'll be able to do this or do that. All things shall be added unto you this day. It says seek ye for the kingdom of God. What you are doing is that you are seeking the kingdom of God. All the programs you are having, what are you doing? Seeking the kingdom of God. When you are preaching, what are you doing? You are seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness. When you are counseling, when you are helping people, you are not doing it for your own sake. You are doing it because of the kingdom of God. You are devoted to the kingdom. And you are abandoned to the work of the kingdom. And because you are devoted to the kingdom, you know that as you are seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all needs in your life, all that you need to make you successful in that job and to make you happy in your life, everything will be supplied in Jesus' name. All these things shall be added unto you in the spiritual in the physical, in the natural, in the family, all your needs are supplied. In Second Peter chapter one, verses three and four. Second Peter chapter one, verses three and four. According as his divine power has given unto us what? All things that pertain unto life. All things that pertain unto life. Not only that, all things that pertain unto godliness. He has given unto us. It's in your account. It's deposited for you. It's for the Lord. He's keeping it for you. And anytime you need any part of your inheritance, you go to the Lord because it says he has given unto us. And he did it according to his divine power. He has given unto us all things pertaining to life and pertaining to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He has given us exceedingly great, exceedingly precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. And when you think about the divine nature, the divine nature never thinks there is a lack, never thinks there is a need, never thinks there is a problem without a solution never thinks that things are so bad that the divine nature does not know what to do. The nature the Lord has given you and the promises the Lord has given you will make you to understand every crossroad, every need, every situation of your life, he will give you the wisdom to sail through and you will break through. I said you will break through. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. 
And then he tells us in the promise of the Lord, telling us in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 22. Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 22. All things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. All things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Believing, ye shall receive. You know, there are people that pray too quickly. They pray too soon. They pray too early. What I mean is, they have not prepared themselves. They have not checked up the promises of God. And it's like going to the bank and you didn't take with you the check you wanted to catch. You were so much in a hurry to get into the bank and to beat the rush hour that the check you wanted to catch, you didn't even take it along with you. And then you got there, although you got there early before everybody else, what are you going to do? But make sure you take that check, write it, and sign it appropriately, properly. And then you get to the bank. Anytime you get to the bank, the bank is open. The bank of heaven will never close for you. All things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Before you go to pray, look over this promise again. I'm going to pray now. What do I want to ask? I want to ask item one, item two, item three. Before I ask, do I have any assurance that the Lord will give me this? Yes, I have the assurance. Where is my assurance? It's in Matthew chapter 21 verse 22. All things whatsoever I ask in prayer, believing I will receive. In Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? Now, before you pray, you will say, because I believe. All things are possible to me while I'm believing. Be because I believe. All things are possible for me while I'm believing. Because I believe. Do you believe? I said, do you believe? Because I believe. All things are possible for me and to me while I'm believing. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. We're looking at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now, I want to tell you something. You need to stretch yourself. I'll explain what I mean. You need to stretch your faith. I'll explain to you what I mean. You see those athletes, the way they train the athletes, here is the way they train them. They will get through them through some exercises. And then they make them to go a little bit beyond what they did the previous day. Then they go the next day and they make them to stretch themselves and to exercise themselves and to exert some energy a little bit above what they did the previous day. And day after day, day after day, day after day, they keep on increasing the pressure on them so that by the end of about six months, they'll be able to do some gymnastics and some physical things they were not able to do six months ago. Do you know how you are going to stretch your faith? Today, you go a little bit further and make your request and make your expectation and make your prayer a little bit to stretch you a little bit beyond yesterday. And then tomorrow, you stretch yourself again a little bit more than you did, than you have done today. And then the following day, stretch yourself more. By the end of six months, you are going to be surprised what the results in prayer will be for you. In John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do. Oh, you say, I've read that before, but I've not experienced it. You know why you have not experienced it? You want to do it all at a go. I want you to look up here. And there is a university professor. And this university professor, he comes to his village. And then the headmaster of the primary school invited the professor. This is one of the sons in the land. And is now a professor. 
And because he's a professor, I want him to encourage these primary school children. And I want him to tell them, motivating them, face your studies. Because if you face your studies, I want to tell you the things I know. You will know, and more than the things I know, you will know because you face your studies. Wonderful encouragement, wonderful motivation. And then one of those children in the primary school, the following day, he says, I want to exactly manifest and exercise and reveal the knowledge of a professor. No, it doesn't work like that. A lesson at a time, a class at a time. A test at a time. An exam at a time. It will not take long. You will find out year after year. As you are making progress. As you are making progress. You come to the point where one of these uh, pupils in the primary school. He gets to the position. He looks back at the day when the professor came to their primary school. And then he can say, see me. By the grace of God, what the professor told us in the primary school, I remember some years ago that he said, we will know what he knew and we will do what he did. And all the experiments and the papers he wrote, we will be able to write, I have arrived there. And then he continues and becomes greater than that professor. You know, what the Lord Jesus is telling us, is like the Lord Jesus, the professor. It's like he's coming to our primary school level and he's encouraging us and he's saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do. And I've never healed a headache. And I've never been able to pray for even small, small things to take place. I've been in the primary school. And Jesus tells me, the things I do, you will do. And then, you know, the mistake we make, we say, okay, see what Jesus said. The things he did, we shall do. Now, what did he do? I know that uh, he cast out devils. I know he raised the dead. I know he healed the sick. And then, uh, you know, because we had that message in the morning, in the afternoon, we go to the mortuary. We go to the hospital and say, bring out all those dead people there. I want to raise them up. What's happening to you? I said, bring them out. Why? Because Jesus said. Are you hearing me? The works I do, ye shall do. Primary school child, come back. Deal with headache first. And deal with stomach problem first. And then continue class after class. Prayer after prayer. Manifestation of faith after manifestation of faith. And then you'll be getting on and getting on. And the day will come that the things that Jesus did, you will do in Jesus' name. And uh, also greater works than these shall ye do because he has gone to the Father. And whatsoever, in verse 13, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I want you to say, whatsoever I ask in Christ's name. Whatsoever I ask in Christ's name, that he will do, that he will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Do you really believe that? Will that happen this day? Are you going to pray assuredly this day? And is the Lord going to answer your prayer? Yes, he will, because whatsoever you shall ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I come to point number two, the power of a hopeful, trusting faith. The power of a hopeful, trusting faith. In First Kings chapter 17, First Kings chapter 17. And we're looking at verse 13. First Kings 17, 13. Here we're told in this story, this narrative. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. 
and after that, make for thee and for thy son. I'm sure you know the story, but I need to tell you something about the story. There had been farming for some time. And not only that, it was an ordinary farm, it was a terrible farming. That even the rich people of the land, even the king Ahab himself with Obadiah, they were going about searching for what the animals would be able to have. And the rich people, they were feeling the pangs of the farming already. And then God said, Elijah, get out of there. I have commanded a woman to feed you and to sustain you. Everything will be all right. What kind of woman is that going to be? Because this has been the time of farming. When God tells you something, do not allow yourself to be surprised when what you see is different from what you think you are going to see. He came to the land, and then as he got to the land, he saw a woman gathering sticks, and he said, Can you fetch me, I pray you, I plead with you, a little water there in a vessel that I may drink? Is this the woman? But look at her. And look at her stature. And look at her makeup. And look at the child by her side. Looks like these people do not even have enough. But this is the place God sent me. You will not walk by sight. I said you will not walk by sight. Don't walk by sight. I want to tell you something too. Don't look at people and size them up because of the way they look. Because look at the posture of this, my brother. And look at the stature of this, my sister. Don't evaluate people on their physical stature. Look beyond. Because that may be the person that the Lord has sent to be a great blessing in your life. And while she was going then, Elijah said, not only that, uh, as, uh, you will also bring some bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. Don't listen to their confession. Don't allow their confession to destroy your faith. The Lord has sent me here and has said that this woman will provide my need and that until the famine is over, I will be there and my need will be totally supplied. And I'm telling her now, can you give me some water there? She's even trying to be hospitable. She's giving me water. And I said, please, while you are coming, bring a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the Lord liveth, he's even using the name of God. Is telling me, did you miss your road? Did you forget the person the Lord sent you? Because as for me, even the Lord knows, even the Lord knows, I have nothing to take care of myself and I have nothing to give. Let me tell you something. God is telling you to give and then you look at yourself, you say, but I have nothing to give. But you have because you are a miracle already. Your family is a miracle already. And there's a miracle in your hand. And there's a miracle in your house. And there's a miracle in your supply, in your inheritance. There is a miracle with your name attached to it in Jesus' name. Not only that, dear woman, when you give what you cannot give, then the Lord will give what he can give. When you give what you cannot give, then the Lord will give what he can give. And then he said, but I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and tell me. And what? You are not speaking to me. I'm speaking to you. I said, the woman said, that I'm only dressing this for me and my son, that I may eat it and uh, die. But do you know, do you know, my brother, when God is favorable to you, and when God is on your side, even your negative confession, he will cancel. The things were said without knowing what you are saying. And you say, well, death is coming. You will not die. I said you will not die. That's why Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. After that, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. 
until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the land. And she believed. And she believed. She accepted the word of the Lord. If you believe what I'm telling you this morning, you'll see the glory of God. You'll see the miracle in your life. And you'll see multiplied supply in your life and ministry in Jesus' name. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which is speak by Elijah. That is the power of hopeful, trusting faith. In Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 4. In Second Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 23. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon or Sabbath. And he said, It shall be well. And she said, And she said, Wonderful woman here, a woman of faith. You know, faith will dry the tears from your eyes, faith will clear the sorrow from your heart. Faith will not make us to see you walking about as if the whole world is upon me. The only child I have got, that child has died. And then you are telling the father, you see this now? This is what I'm telling you. Maybe it is because we are not in unity together. Did you hear the message of yesterday? If we will be united together, we will not be having this kind of problem. If we will be praying together, and then you'll begin to heap it and, and, and just uh, lay it on your husband. That's what I'm saying. Although you are a good husband in every other area, but we are not praying together. We are not reading the Bible together. See now, the child has died. What are we going to do? Well, 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 uh, that's your child. Go and bury the child. Never. Day from this day, you will be a woman of faith and you will talk faith in Jesus' name. She said the, the child was dead already. And then she came to the husband and said, I'm going to go to the man of God. Wonderful woman. Even though it was a good thing she wanted to go and do, she even had to go and inform the husband. I hope, my dear sister, after you leave uh, this uh, Congress, you will not be going out anymore without even giving information to your husband. Honey, I am going to such and such a place. I'm going to such and such a place. And uh, if there's no other thing, I shall come back about this particular time. What a wonderful fellowship and relationship. And the husband said, oh, why are you going today? Because it's not the new moon. And it's not Sabbath. It's not a day of fellowship or revival of worship. What are you going to do there? Don't worry. It shall be well. And the husband did not argue because she, he trusted that woman. Whenever that woman made a statement like that, the man knew, no problem, it shall be well. And then we're told, then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. I want to get to the man of God in time. Then we are told, so she went in verse 25, and came to the man of God unto Camel. And it, it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off. Uh, why is this woman coming today? There's no appointment. What's she coming for? That he said to Gehazi his servant, behold, yonder is a Shunammite. Run now and I, I pray thee and to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, and she answered, I am asking you this morning, is it well with you? Is it well with your ministry? Is it well with your church? Is it well with your wife? Is it well with your husband? Now your, your children are not here. Here you are. And the devil sees uh, you came. You know how the devil, this devil is very bad. Everybody say a bad devil. Terrible devil unreasonable devil you know as you are here while you are listening to the message then your mind will go to the child to one of the children i don't know maybe those children now they have dropped away they have dropped from the upstairs and they have come down i don't know now maybe they have carried one of them to the hospital i don't know now maybe the vehicle has uh, crushed uh, one of the children's legs i don't know the devil he'll be giving you imagination 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 Say, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. It is well with my child. 
it is well with my child. It is well in my family. It is well with my relatives. It is well with anything I do. Elijah said, Gehazi, go and ask this woman, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she said, it is well. It will be well with you in Jesus' name. Don't ever cry because of something the devil is trying to do because Almighty God in the Lord Jesus Christ will reverse everything the devil tries to do in your life and in your ministry in Jesus' name. And it is well. And it shall be well. I said it shall be well. And let no man heart fail because of what we see or because of the wind that is blowing. Because I can assure you, when you get back home, it will be well. And when you are in the ministry, it will be well. Everything you lay your hand upon, it shall be well. In First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17, the power of a hopeful, trusting faith. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. David, more, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. Thank you, Saul. At least that's good. That's encouraging. You can go. I cannot do it, but you will do it. Don't let your brother uh, tell you you cannot do it. And don't let anybody tell you you cannot do it. You will do what God has given you to do. I said you will do what God has given you to do. And where the Lord has sent you to go, you will go there. You will be successful in Jesus' name. There will be no lack in your life. Every Goliath you meet on the missionary field, every Goliath you meet on the investing field, every Goliath you meet in the evangelistic field, every Goliath you meet in your personal life, you will bring them down in Jesus' name. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an element of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor. And his, he had said to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off from him. Don't use another person's armor. Whatever God finds in your hand, that is what he will use to give you the victory. What did God find in the hand of Moses? A simple rod. And it was that rod. Go in the strength of the Lord with this rod in your hand and you will have the victory. And what did God use in the case of David? A sling and a stone. In the case of Samson, what did he add? All he had was the jawbone of an ass. Whatever God finds in your hand, that is what he will use. And when Jesus wanted to feed 5,000, what was available? Just the meal of a little lad. That was enough. Whatever God finds in your hand, that is what he will use. You don't have to copy evangelist so-and-so and prophet so-and-so and the great man so-and-so. What God has found in your hand and you are used to that's what he will use and you will have the victory in Jesus name and he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a script and then it says in his, his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Am I a dog? You are a Philistine. What are you? You are uncircumcised. What are you? You are an enemy of God. What are you? You are an enemy of the people of God. What are you? And you are bragging, you don't know today you are going to die. What are you? And the man said, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistine caused David with his God. And maybe some traditional people try to curse you with their God, but they will not succeed. I said they will not succeed. 
And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David unto to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with his sword, and with his spear, and with his shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied this day. When? When? This day will the Lord do, will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from of thee. And I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the, and to the wild bees of the, of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. All the people around you in your region, in your state, in your nation, they will know the God of heaven, his presence, his power is there right with you. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword or with spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near unto meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took this a stone and slunk it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the face of their So David prevailed. So David prevailed. And you have prevailed already. You have prevailed over the Philistine. You have prevailed over the giant. You have prevailed over Goliath. So David prevailed over the Philistine with his sling and with his stone. And he smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. What did he use? He used the sword of Goliath to destroy the Goliath. And you will destroy every Goliath in your life in Jesus' name. The power of a hopeful, trusting faith. Point number three. The praise of a holy, heroic, triumphant faith. The praise of a heroic, triumphant faith. Our faith is triumphant. I said our faith is triumphant. Here the singer of Israel singing and telling us how he manifested that heroic, triumphant faith. In first, Second Samuel chapter 22, Second Samuel chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 30. See the song of this man, heroic faith. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I lived over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. It's a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God? Save the Lord, except the Lord. Who is a rock? Except our God. God is my strength, and God is my power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon the high places. He teacheth my hand to war, so that a bow, a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness has made me great. The gentleness and the goodness and the grace of God will make you great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not sleep. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them, and turned not again until I have consumed them. I have consumed them and wounded them, that they could not arise. Yea, they are falling under my feet. They are falling under your feet. I said they are falling under your feet. You have become a champion. You have become a hero. You are going out of this conference with that heroic faith and triumphant faith in your heart. Anything that comes against you, like they used to come, and you'll be trembling, and you'll be shaking. Now you become, you will have the victory in Jesus' name. 
in verse 40, for thou hast guarded me, he was trying to battle them that rose up against me, as thou subdued under me, thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save them, none to help, none to save, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Then I did beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did time them as a mire of the street, and did spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be the head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. Did you hear that? Some people you never knew. Some people you never came across. Strangers to you, they will help you move forward. They will help you go up. A people which I knew not shall submit. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. He was praising the Lord because of the holy, heroic, triumphant faith that he had. And you don't only just praise the Lord with words, you also sing unto the Lord in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, we're looking at verse 15 and then we're going to verse 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15, and he said, Hacking ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you. Thus says the Lord unto you. Thus says the Lord unto you. Be not afraid. Will you be afraid again? Why are you listening to the stories they are telling all around you? This has happened to so and so. This has happened to such and such. This may happen to whoever. But the Lord is saying, the Lord is on your side. Do not be afraid. Not be dismayed. By reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God. Why is the battle rising up again since I've given my life to the Lord? But there's no battle for you. It is to show the power of God. It is to prove the majesty of God. It is to exalt the name of the Lord. And it is to give more glory to the Lord. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You don't have any battles anymore. You don't have any problems anymore. Because the battle is no more yours. It belongs to the Lord now. And you are going to succeed. You are going to overcome. You are going to triumph in Jesus' name. In verse 17, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Once again is reminding them, reminding us, nor be dismayed. For tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You'll be going back tomorrow, and on the road, the Lord will be with you. In your location, the Lord will be with you. As you go, as you get back to your ministry, to your church, to your location, you are there with new power. You are there with the praise of God in your mouth. And you are there with victory going with you in Jesus' name. Because any battle that shows up now, any difficulty that shows up now, you'll just be looking like they're just singing amazing grace as with the sun. And then the battle will be finished in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 20, And they rose early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. Jehoshaphat, that was the king, because the prophet had told him, Fear not Jehoshaphat, fear not Judah, fear not Jerusalem. The battle is not yours, the battle belongs to the Lord. And he took that, he took that. How do we know when you are taking the word of God? How do we know when you have accepted the word of God? How do we know when you are not fearing anymore? What will you do to demonstrate and to show? Now I believe the Lord and there is no fear anymore. And there is uh, no suspicion anymore. And there is no cringing anymore. And there is no feeling maybe, maybe, maybe I will still be defeated. I believe in my heart. How do we know that you believe in your heart? It says believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye prosper. So shall ye be established. You begin to encourage other people. 
encourage other people. And as you encourage other people, then it says very clearly, then you will be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. Believe in the prophet of God, and so shall ye prosper. And all the words you have been hearing every morning here in the faith clinic, the prophetic word has been coming to you. The word of faith, and the word of hope, and the word of love, and the word of the assurance that God will do what he has said he will do is coming to you. And I'm sure you believe. I said I'm sure you believe. And you will prosper because you believe in Jesus' name. And when he had consulted with the people... When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute, dear shepherd. Where did you see this before? I never saw that before. Tell me, what have you seen before in connection with singing? Tell me the history of the children of Israel. Well, the history of the children of Israel is they were by the Red Sea. And then the Lord divided the Red Sea and parted into two. And three million people, men, women, children, they all passed over with all their cattle. And then when they got to the other side, they saw that the Egyptians, their enemies, they were drowned in the sea. Joshua, tell me, what did they do after that? They began to sing. Joshua, why don't you wait in your singing at, at the end when the Lord had given you the victory? No, I don't want to wait. Why don't you want to wait? Their singing was not the song of faith because they didn't sing before the Red Sea was divided. They were murmuring. They were complaining. They were crying out. They were saying, Woo to God were died in the land of Egypt. They were sorrowful. They didn't have faith. It was, it was a bunch of people of unbelief. And it was not because of their faith. It was the faith of Moses that made the Red Sea to be divided. And now they were rejoicing on the basis of another person's faith. But our people here today, we believe God. Before we see the army destroy themselves, and before we see the battle all overcome, and before we see the victory, we're going to show we're a people of faith, not a bunch of people of unbelief. That's why we're doing our own singing before the battle is won. That's why you'll do your singing while the problems are still there. You'll do your shouting while the Jericho walls are still up. And you will do your rejoicing while the problems still appear to be there. Because you can see with the eyes of faith. Be because you can see with a heroic faith. Because you can see with a triumphant faith that victory is yours and you have triumphed and therefore you can sing even before the problems are solved. And so they said that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. I said they were smitten. And I said your enemies will be smitten. And I said your problems will be over. And I said you'll be victorious. I said you'll be triumphant in Jesus' name. But the children of Ammon and the children of Moab stood against up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the tower, the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the, unto, unto the multitude, and behold, they were all dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. You are more than a conqueror already. I said you are more than a conqueror already. In, uh, in uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter Of course, if you're, if you're looking for demonstration of faith, you'll find it in the life of Paul the Apostle. He wrote about faith. He preached about faith. And he manifested faith. And he demonstrated faith. And that faith is a kind of faith, heroic faith, triumphant faith. The kind of faith that can sing because you have the assurance the problems are over already. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 at me night Paul and Silas prayed and sang what did they do tell me out loud what did they do apostles 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 they sang and you know there are some people the higher they go the cooler they become did you hear me 
I say the higher they go, the cooler they become. And, and in fact, some of the churches, they, uh, they even uh, they, 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 they show that if they see a bishop singing, if they see an archbishop singing, if they see somebody very high in church singing, they say, what's the matter? Because they feel that singing is for children in the choir, is for young people in the choir. But David sang, even Jesus sang with his own disciples. And here we find Paul, the apostle, singing in the prison at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. They are singing, woke up, the prisoners, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, imme suddenly and immediately, suddenly and immediately, suddenly and immediately. You know, this year, that's how God will be surprising you. You have been thinking about a problem, and you have been saying, I I'm going to, I'm, when I get to church, I'm going to table that a problem before the people of God, and we're going to rise up, and we're going to pray. But meanwhile, I'll just be singing unto the Lord. And while you are singing to the Lord, before you even collect the saints together, the people of God together to begin to pray, suddenly and immediately, all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose, even the others that were sleeping, and the others that were not praying, and the others that were not singing praises to the Lord, their bands were loosed, and the time has come. I said the time has come when all the bands, all the bondage, all the captivity, everything will be totally destroyed in Jesus' name, because I can assure you today, you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. And I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want to assure you as you go tomorrow, anywhere you are, as you are moving on, always remember in First John chapter 4 verse 4, always remember this in First John chapter 4 verse 4, ye of God, little children. I said ye of God, big children. Because many of us who are not little children, you converts anymore. If the little children are of God, how about you, the minister? How about you, the preacher? How about you, my dear sister? Ye of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Where are the overcomers here today? Overcoming every problem, overcoming every yoke, overcoming every attack. Why don't you stand up? You have overcome. I said, you have overcome. I said, you have overcome. That problem in your family, you have overcome. That uh, problem in the ministry, you have overcome. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who are the powers that be in the country where you come from? Who are the powers that be in the village that you come from? Who are the powers that be in the locality that you come from? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are greater than them. The one in you, the greater one, living in you, he will put you over. He will put you over. He will put you over. Greater is he that is in you you than he that is in the world. No failure again. No defeat again. No harassment of the devil again. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not be defeated. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, 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 greater. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is nothing to fear. 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 You are not going to fear a man like yourself. Neither are you going to fear a man that's an unbeliever. What can an unbeliever do against you? You are afraid of them. What can a sinner do against you? You are afraid of them. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in them. A, even an assembly, a combination, a group, a company of unbelievers, whatever their occultic power, whatever their evil power, what can they do against you that are afraid of them? Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. The greater one abides in you. The greater one lives in you. The greater one will see you through. The greater one will see you through. No mountain you cannot climb. No mountain you cannot remove. No river you cannot cross. 
no assignment you cannot carry out, no message you cannot give, no demonstration you cannot show, because the greater one abides in you and lives in you. Greater, 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 greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are victorious, you are more than a conqueror. And he always causes you to triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. Always, always, always and every time. You are going back home with victory. You are going back home with conviction. You are going back home with assurance. You are going back home with the assurance that you have overcome already. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. The sins you committed in the past, God said he has forgiven. The burden on your heart, God said he has removed. The heartache and the sorrow in the heart, the Lord said he has cleared away. And the Lord will perfect everything concerning you. And the Lord will perfect everything concerning your wife. And the Lord will perfect everything concerning your children. What you have been looking at making you sorrowful make you to be downhearted. The Lord said, I've rolled all the problems away. He has rolled all the problems away. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your victory. The joy of the Lord is your success. The joy of the Lord attracts your miracle. The joy of the Lord will pull you over. No tears this year, laughter, happiness, and joy. No sorrow this year, laughter, happiness, and joy. No complaint or murmuring this year, laughter, joy, happiness. No murmuring this year, laughter, happiness, and joy. The Lord is on your side. 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 You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. Through him who has loved you. You have overcome. You have overcome. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody give me a good amen. You are sure of victory today and tomorrow and this year and in your life. A good amen. No more sorrow again. No more sickness again. No more premature death again. No more crying anymore. Only joy. Only happiness. Only triumph. Oh, you are a hero in the Lord in Jesus' name. You will march on the head of the devil. You will tread over the devil. You will march on to victory. You will do the work of the Lord. Your reward will not fail in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. I thank you for every brother here. I thank you for every sister here. I thank you for every ear that has heard, every eye that has seen, every heart that has felt, every heart that has believed, every hand of faith that has taken hold, I, I thank you for everybody. And I pray, Lord, the days of defeat and downfall, those days are over. The days of murmuring, grumbling, complaining, those days are over. The days of just cringing and crawling under the power of the enemy, those days are over. The days of defeat, those days are over. Every brother here, every sister here, from every country here, I pray the victory of the cross and the victory of resurrection, resurrection power of the Lord will be given to every one of you in Jesus' name. In a time of need, all your needs will be supplied. Time of difficulty, the Lord will carry you over. Every need in your family, every need in your ministry will be supplied adequately in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone that has gone through all the streets of faith clinic. I pray this clinic will keep on working in their hearts. 
the vase like a tonic will keep on walking in their body walking in their mind walking in their ministry and the greater one will be living big in their lives every day every moment in jesus name as we have said, as we have claimed, as we have proclaimed, as we have pronounced, you are up, you will never come down. God has made you the head, you will not be the tail. In every battle of life, you will be victorious. God will confirm the victory every day of the year, every step of the way, in everything that you do. You'll have testimony in your mouth in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the joy of the Lord will never stop in the lives of your people. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.